right, everyone, you're going to want to pay close attention to this one, because today we're tackling what might just be the holy grail of AI art. We're talking about that one massive, persistent problem that has plagued every single one of us since day one, creating consistent characters. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. We've been promised this before. A lot. In fact, if you saw my recent review of Omnigen 2, you know it made some huge claims about solving this very thing. And while it had some interesting ideas, when we really put it to the test, it, well, it didn't quite stick the landing. The real-world results still struggled with keeping characters consistent across different scenes and prompts. Well, get ready to get your hopes up again. Today, we are looking at a brand new model from ByteDance called Xverse. And after digging through the research paper and seeing what this thing can do, guys, I think this might actually be the one. This feels like the tool that finally truly delivers on that promise. Now, I know, big promises require big proof. So how does Xverse actually perform against the tools we're already using? This isn't just hype. The creators put it through a brutal head-to-head -head competition, a benchmark they built called Xverse Bench. They threw it in the ring with heavy hitters like MS Diffusion, Omnigen 2, and Dreamo. The results are... It's a knockout. Xverse didn't just edge them out, it established a new top tier of performance, especially in the multi-subject tests, where most models completely fall apart. And it's not just about the numbers on a chart. When you look at the qualitative comparisons, it's a night and day difference. You see prompts like an old man and a young man standing together on a street. The other models spit out these warped, uncanny valley figures. But the X-first result, it's clean, the identities are perfect, the scene feels coherent, and most importantly, believable. It just works. Let's get to the main event and look at the proof. I've gone through the examples they released, and this is where you can really see what this tool is capable of. First up, let's look at how it handles single subjects, which is the absolute baseline. They took this photo of a panda and prompted a panda sitting on a bamboo mat. And bam, look at this. Four different scenes, different compositions, but it is unquestionably the same panda every single time. The fur pattern, the face, the identity is completely locked in. Same thing with this dog. They took a photo of it and prompted a dog wearing a red collar running. And again, Perfect execution. Same dog, dynamic running poses, and the collar is there. It just works. Now, let's move on to people, because that's where things get really tricky. They took a headshot of this woman and prompted, A woman smiling in a flower-filled garden. And the results are seriously impressive. It is clearly the same woman in all four images. That subtle smile, the facial structure, it's her. And look at the variety. Different dresses, different flower gardens in the background, from roses to sunflowers. This is the holy grail for anyone wanting to create a story or a comic with a consistent character. Sam goes for this child with the prompt, A boy smiling in a sunny park. The face is identical, the lighting is beautiful and realistic, and the background blur is perfect. And it's not just faces, it handles objects incredibly well too. They gave it a picture of this specific leather handbag and prompted, A woman holds a leather handbag. In every single output, it's the exact same bag. The texture, the shape, the straps, it's perfect. This is a massive deal for things like product photography or mock-ups. Okay, so it nails single subjects. But what happens when we start adding more complexity? This is where most models fall apart. Let's look at this two-subject example, a reference photo of a woman and a photo of a classical statue. The prompt is, a woman is standing beside a classical bust. And this is super interesting because it shows both the power and the current limitations. The woman, perfect. Her face is 100% consistent across all the shots. But the statue? It's all over the place. It changes shape. In some, it has hair when the original was bald. And in one shot, it even looks like it changed from male to female. So this tells us that while Xverse has basically solved human identity, it can still get a little confused with secondary objects when the scene gets complicated. I appreciate them showing this though, it's an honest look at where the tech is. Let's look at another one. Here we have a man and a young boy with the prompt, a boy is standing beside a man. Now this is good. 
The consistency on both faces is incredibly strong. They both look exactly like their reference photos, even in the close-up shots. You might see some tiny variations in things like the old man's hairline in another example, which shows that two human subjects are still the ultimate challenge, but the core facial identity is preserved, which is what matters most. Now, this next one is where my jaw kind of hit the floor. This isn't just two or three inputs. Look at this. They provided an image of a boy, a dog, a specific coat, a specific bench, a coffee cup, and even an image of the text Xverse. Six different inputs. And the output? The same boy wearing the same coat is sitting on the same bench with the same coffee cup next to him with the same dog at his feet and the Xverse text is perfectly rendered on the wall behind him. This is a level of complex scene composition and object alignment that is just unheard of. It shows you can throw the kitchen sink at this thing and it can actually handle it. And it's not just about subject identity, Xverse can also control style and lighting. In this crazy example, they took a photo of a girl, a hat, a shawl, and a spaceship, and then gave it a style reference of a yoga pose. The result is the same girl wearing the hat and shawl is doing that exact yoga pose on what looks like Mars with the spaceship blurred in the background. It perfectly blended all five inputs into one coherent image. Same with the relighting examples. You see this teddy bear? Here it is in a neutral setting. Now here it is in a neon lit room, and look how that purple light realistically reflects off its fur. It truly understands how light and objects interact. Finally, let's look at the head-to-head -head shootout against other models. They took this photo of a hut and prompted a person standing in front of a hut. Xverse's result is clean, the hut is identical to the input, and a person is there. Now look at Dreamo and Omnigen 2. The hut is completely different. They lost the identity of the object. Uno didn't even add a person. Here, Xverse is the clear winner. Same thing with people. They use photos of a man and a woman. X versus result is a perfect match. Dreamo is close, but you can see the identity shift. Omnigen 2 completely changes the girl's face. And the other models, let's just say they're not even in the same league. Now, let's be real for a second here. Are some of these examples cherry-picked? Almost certainly. That's just how these things go when a new tool is launched. They're always going to show you the best of the best results. Their Hugging Fees demo isn't live just yet, but they say it's coming soon. And you know that as soon as it drops, I will be there to put it through some real-world torture tests myself. My current GPU setup isn't quite ready for this beast, but I'm planning an upgrade. And once that happens or a demo goes live, I will be back with a full hands-on video with installation and testing. But until then, based on what they've shown, this looks incredibly promising. So, seeing all this, the big question is, how? How is it pulling this off when so many others have failed? To understand that, we need to pop the hood and look at the engine. And this is where it gets really fascinating because it's a brilliant two-part strategy. First is how it learns, and second is how it generates. Take a look at this diagram. This is their data construction pipeline, and it's pure genius. They start by feeding an image, like this one of a woman walking, into an AI model called Florence 2. First, Florence acts like a narrator and creates a detailed caption. A woman walking down a sidewalk wearing a purple shirt and jeans. Standard stuff so far. But here's where it gets mind-blowing. It then goes back and does something called phrase grounding. It becomes a digital detective, meticulously linking every T part of that sentence back to the exact pixels in the image. It digitally cuts out the purple shirt, it isolates the jeans, and it segments the woman as a whole entity. And it's smart about it, too. It uses phrase filtering to ignore boring background stuff we don't care about, like the sidewalk. Then for the most important part, the person's identity, it uses another powerful model called called SAM2 to perform precise face extraction. This step is absolutely critical because it ensures the AI is learning the specific facial features that define a person's unique look. Okay, so how does it actually use all that smart training data during generation? This is where the magic really happens, and it's basically a four-stage process working in perfect sync. First up, you have the T-Mod adapter. You give it a reference picture, and it creates a custom instruction packet for that subject. Then, and this is the key, it links that packet directly to the subject's name in your prompt. So when the AI reads the word man, it knows to use the visual rules for your specific man. 
Next, the text flow modulation part kicks in. It takes that instruction packet and gently guides the AI, subtly adjusting its internal knobs rather than doing a clumsy copy and paste. This is how it maintains the overall composition of the image without creating a mess. Then, once the main scene is set, a separate VAE feature module does a detail pass. Its only job is to sprinkle in those super fine-grained details like the texture of a shirt or a glint in an eye and clean up any weird artifacts, making the final image look crisp and realistic. And finally, to keep everything from going haywire, it uses clever regularization techniques. This is essentially the AI's training discipline. It has a rule that says, hey, you're only changing this person, so don't you dare mess up the background. This keeps the AI focused and ensures the changes are precise and clean. It's this combination, the smart instructions, the detail pass, and the strict discipline that lets Xverse pull off this magic trick so well. It's not just one feature, it's the whole system working in perfect harmony. And now, for the question that's burning in everyone's mind, where can I get it? Well, in a fantastic move for the whole community, the code is fully open source and available on GitHub right now. And get this, they've released it under an Apache 2.0 license. For those who don't know, that is an incredibly permissive license. It basically means the community can go wild with it, build on it, and integrate it into their own projects with very few restrictions, which is huge. Now, here's the catch for right now. You're going to need some serious firepower. This is not a tool you'll be running on your laptop during your lunch break. This is a professional-grade model that demands professional-grade hardware. User reports are confirming you'll need a monster GPU, something in the class of an NVIDIA RTX 4090 with its 24 gigabytes of VRAM to run it effectively. But, and this is why that Apache license is such a game-changer, don't be discouraged if you're not rocking a 4090. Because it's so open, I would bet money that the community is already hard at work on this we are almost guaranteed to see optimized and quantized versions start popping up very soon. What that means for the rest of us is that we'll likely see improved versions that can run on much more consumer-friendly GPUs, maybe even on cards with just 8 or even 6 gigabytes of VRAM in the not-too-distant future. So even if you can't run the full-fat version today, keep your eyes peeled because this thing is going to become way more accessible. But if you are one of the lucky ones with a proper rig, the GitHub repo has everything you need to dive in headfirst. I am genuinely so pumped about the potential here. I want to know what you would make with this. Dream up the most complex, multi-character scene you can think of and drop it in the comments below. And if you get it running, please share your creations. As always, thank you for watching. If you got some value out of this deep dive, hitting that like and subscribe button is a huge help. I'll see you all in the next one. Keep creating.